Base is taking off, so it's time to learn how to use Aerodrome Finance on Coinbase's base network, including how to get into the liquidity pools that have insane APYs. APYs so crazy from real yield, by the way. They almost feel like you're tapping into some kind of like infinite money glitch. It's that crazy because the base layer two network is looking good right now. DeFi is taking off. Meme coins that are still below the radar are out there ones that are taken off are still probably undervalued. And as it's very low fee option, it has a user-friendly focus. Oh, and don't forget that it was made by and closely connected to the people over at Coinbase itself and their 120 million users, which might be the most retail-friendly crypto platform out there, and thus giving Base a very strong foundation and the potential to attract big crowds of retail mainstream users on chain so if that all makes you want to get started using base then one of the best ways to start using base is through aerodrome which is a major base based decentralized exchange providing liquidity within the network and showing solid growth since it launched last year so i'm going to spend this video walking you through the basics of how to use aerodrome what you need to know, and how you can do it. So what can you actually do on Aerodrome? Well, just to clarify what using Aerodrome actually involves, we're going to look at the two main actions that you can do on the platform. That is swapping tokens and providing liquidity, both of which can be interesting and profitable depending on what you're doing, right? To start with, we need to connect our wallet, of course, we need to have a Coinbase wallet or a MetaMask wallet or some other wallet. So we can go ahead and use our MetaMask wallet in this situation, making sure that the wallet is connected to the base network. To add base to MetaMask, you can go to basescan.org, scroll to the bottom and click the add base to MetaMask button. Now, base uses ETH or Ether from the Ethereum network as gas, but transactions are way cheaper than over on Ethereum pennies literally however you're going to need to have some eth on base in order to transact you have to have it in your wallet to pay to transact on base one very easy way to get your eth over to base is simply to send it from coinbase to your wallet but selecting the send it on the base network option pretty easy or you can go to the official base bridge and do it that way which is also quick and easy or you can use a variety of third-party bridges like D-Bridge or Jumper Finance to swap over as well. There's one more thing you need to do too, which is to wrap up your ETH, turning it into wrapped ETH. You're going to want to do this by going to the swap function, selecting ETH at the top, W ETH at the bottom, and entering how much of your ETH you'd like to convert. Now you can notice here though, that you're not actually making a regular swap. We're wrapping the ETH, which means that the conversion rate is always going to be one to one. It's not going to be slightly off like you would with swapped over to staked Ethereum, for example, and that there are no fees for doing this. The process of wrapping ETH just makes it able to be used or usable on platforms like Aerodrome. And you can unwrap it back to regular ETH with the swap function as well. Now let's take a look at swapping tokens. So we've already used the swap function to wrap our ETH and making a proper swap is a very similar process. You enter the token that you're selling in at the top and the token that you're buying below that. Then you enter the amount that you would like to swap and you can adjust, of course, the slippage if the pair you're trading is a low liquidity coin. That means the amount of slip in the price finality that you're willing to accept remember slippage is the maximum variation that you're going to accept between the quoted price and the price the trade actually executes at with high liquidity pairs think usdc and ethereum you can keep this below one percent and you'll be fine the price impact will be very very minimal in those situations but those more obscure low liquidity edges of crypto coins you know the shit coins we're talking about guys you might need higher slippage in that case Finally, if it all looks good, you can just click to allow a permission in MetaMask and then click to make the swap. Again, confirming that in MetaMask. It's pretty easy to do. Now, if you're wondering what to buy, well, Base has plenty of things. Lots of meme coin plays, for example, tickers like Brett, 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 or Normie, stuff like this. Lots of stuff out there in the meme coin space. 
But I steered away from memes for this particular video. And we're actually going to swap our Ethereum for a staking token called Wrapped Staked Ethereum. Pretty cool, right? You can get that on base as well. Now let's learn about providing liquidity. So when we swap tokens, we're using liquidity pools, meaning supplies of tokens that allow for quick, low slippage trading. So on Aerodrome, as well as swapping tokens, we can also contribute to the liquidity pools by throwing in our tokens and getting paid for it. Because, of course, we're not doing that just because we're just good citizens of the crypto internet and we really like making decentralized exchanges work. No, we're doing it because we want to get a cut of the fees paid by users making the swaps. We want the ka ching, ka -ching which on Aerodrome will be paid to us in the platform's Aero token. Now, to do all this, after clicking the liquidity tab, we're going to look at the list of pools and we can then see their APRs. But I'm going to go for a relatively safe pair made up of wrapped Ethereum and the token that I swapped it into before, which is wrapped staked Ethereum. With two similar tokens and not much volatility, it's a bit of a safer play. And right now it's paying out an APR of around 15%, which is more than you'd get by just staking that Ethereum. Enter the amount that you want to provide of the first token in the pair, and the DEX will then tell you how much of the corresponding token in that particular pair you're going to need to provide to fulfill that liquidity pool. So if you're going to use this feature, then you'll need to make sure that you have matching amounts of both tokens. You then have to approve several different permissions in your wallet to get everything set up as you go through the checklist on the right. They make it very easy for you, by the way, before finally clicking on deposit and then clicking on stake, which you need to do in order to start earning actual rewards. Having done that, I can then click on the dashboard and see my positions. And look at this. I'm already earning rewards in the form of Aerodrome's native token, Aero. Pretty nice. And in the future, when I'm done, I can come back and claim those rewards. And then I go and click on unstake to withdraw everything that you've seen here in the video in the pool. But you might be wondering, why choose a lower APR or whether you should contribute to a pool with a higher return? So let's think about that next. Different APRs, surprise, surprise, different risk factors. There are pools with much, much higher APRs than the one that I just used. Percentages in the hundreds. Looks pretty attractive, right? And they're certainly worth looking at. But you have to be aware that higher APRs tend to be coupled with higher risk. And there's something called impermanent loss, meaning you kind of lose all your money, but you don't really lose all your money. Impermanent loss is more likely to occur uh, to a bigger degree when the two assets in a pool aren't closely correlated. And there's a wide divergence in their prices occurring. Imagine, say, for example, ETH, which isn't too volatile by crypto standards, coupled with a brand new meme coin that can rise and fall dramatically within hours or days. In that case, the pool has to rebalance itself if prices veer too far away from each other. So if you then go to withdraw at that moment, you're not going to get the same balance of tokens that you put in. You might get a lot less Ethereum back and a whole bunch of these new meme coins that are worth nothing. And this can really eat into your profits or even make you worse off than you would have been had you just hodled your gosh darn tokens in the first place. You can lose money doing this to make it very, very clear. To accurately figure this out, there are also impermanent loss calculators online. Coingecko.com has some, for example, but you still have to keep in mind that volatility can happen much faster than the calculators may have accounted for. But with more stable and correlated pairs, for example, Ethereum and a stable coin or Ethereum and staked Ethereum, and permanent loss is less of a factor. But then the APR is lower because you're taking lower risk, higher risk, higher rewards, lower risk, lower rewards. Also, when it comes to providing liquidity, there are just some coins that are an easier option to hold than others. ETH is the number two coin in the crypto world right now. Stable coins are very different, of course, to meme coins. So you'd be much more comfortable keeping those tokens longer term anyway, whether or not they're in a liquidity pool, okay? And whether or not you have differing variations between those. You're not going to get stuck with something that you really don't want to be stuck with. That all being said, though, these decisions come down to your risk appetite, and you really need to understand, again, you can lose all your money very quickly by doing this. You sometimes might want to choose a 
more out there play. If you think the timing is right and you're sizing that accordingly, don't go all in a size according to your risk structures. All right. Also, don't forget that even what we'd class as the safest options in crypto come with risks too. crypto bugs happen. Protocol hacks happen and you can lose all your money no matter what pool you're in on aerodrome. Okay. Keep that in mind. This market is volatile. It's crazy and all kinds of unexpected things happen. So be prepared for that. So really, it's a case of dipping your toes and experimenting a little bit. Feel free to play around. The fees are cheap enough that you can do that, especially during a bull market. It may be profitable to play around. And on a solid network like base, that has lots of room to grow. Could be even more interesting. But as ever, don't throw in so much capital. It's going to stress you out because we should be having a bit of fun and not be up at night going, what if the protocol gets hacked? Thanks for watching.